Friends. Oh, we're live. And we're live. <gasps> oh, and we're live, friends my and God. Oh. Welcome to another exciting, marvelous episode of Cat Chat. My name is Tom Cat, and I am joined. I, I am so in awe of my guests tonight. Um, uh, I am joined by the marvelous, the talented, the uh, chameleon of the Pennsylvania Renaissance fan. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I am joined by Elizabeth Hardon, host of Thursday Thoughts, my dear friend, my sister, Alex Tom Foley. Welcome to the oh, show. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was such a sweet introduction. Normally- and I meant every word, mostly. Mostly. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, word, the word chameleon was used uh, with all the love. Uh, no, and no, no people, the when, when people introduce me, they're like, and that gay fella from the backyard. <laughs> We've all been there. Who hasn't been the gay man in the back in the in the barnyard? The backyard? The barnyard? Did you, say? Back, well, you you pick. I'll be in any any yard. <laughs> it's any yard. That's where my people are originally from. I'm from the Midwest, so all we know are like backyard, barnyard type. You know, cornhole is not a gay thing in the Midwest. It's a, it's a gay. Cornfields on hee haw. Yes. <laughs> no thank you so much for having me on i so do they they don't know anything about me they, are, uh, they don't but that's why we have these that's why i have people right. on this show and again i am truly trying to hide all of the hairiness right now no, but let's talk let's talk okay so but, but like what what you all don't know home anybody who, the the four to five of you who are clicking scrolling through their iphone oh. right now, <laughs> uh, actually no, funny story i actually a friend of mine i was i told him i said oh, i can't do something tonight I'm, I'm going on my my dear friend's um talk show that they have i said i'm very excited I, I'm, I'm thrilled we finally get to do this episode and they they went hold on and they disappeared and they went and looked up uh how many followers and viewers you have and they got back to me and they said they have over a thousand it's worth your time go go go, go. <laughs> <laughs> they were like a, like a like an agent. They were gonna be like, if it was anything less than a thousand, it wasn't good enough for my baby. And they were gonna be like, no, absolutely not. But the, Aww, you you were deep. I hate that. You were deep. <laughs> hey, do. you're popular. They were like, go, go and let God. So, <laughs> uh, but no, but about us, because back to the top, not my friends. Uh, but about us, you and I. So, are we living for the fact that you and I are doing the exact same look, but a little uh, maim, a little. A little I am wearing white and you are wearing black. Yeah, it's a little mame. It's it's, it's just a big little jewelry. Right now. Yeah, big jewelry, chest hair, the big jewelry, dress. The chest hair, the the big the big eyes, the big lips, big. all that fun stuff. And the big eyes and big lips isn't you and I and drag. That's just us. It's just us. It's just us. Also, to anybody watching or watching on the replay, I'm sorry I keep tilting my head like I'm taking a glamour shot in the 80s. When I contoured my nose today, I was clearly leaning to a side. So when I correct, it makes my nose look broken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like if I go straight on, you're like, oh, is that, that's a little curvy. But if I do this, do the <laughs> art of television. And now you understand why I love this person so fucking much. Oh, um, know. Alex and I have known each other for 13 years, according to Facebook. <sighs> uh, yeah, allegedly. allegedly. Allegedly, according to Facebook. We, we are, uh, like, we're, we are the online, we're, we're online, we are online pro boards, role-playing buddies who became oh, real friends. You really, you we really went friends. there. Well, I mean, you want the people to know it's going to be a whole chapter in one did. of our books. Um, so to those to those not in the know and to those unaware, for years I did role-playing on pro boards. Yes. Whether it was Disney or Twilight or... Well, okay, all right. Listen, listen, we were talking about, like, what we did. We weren't divulging all of the secrets. <laughs> And and Alex and I became friendly with each other over over the over the course of the years that we had done those those uh, yes those pro board sites. We did. And we met on a Disney one. Yes, yes, that was the one that we met on, and we hated each other at first. We did. We really well. You we were thoroughly hated. So it. so Tom Cat Tom Cat was a moderator at the time, I and was. was I mean, this is just to show you how gay we both are. Uh, was, <laughs> was Tom Cat was the moderator of this board at the time, and he was the Ursula character. So not only was he like in charge, but he was also Ursula. And I got to the party a little too late, 
And I was like, oh, Ursula's taken. Well, I'll be her crazy sister. And I may or may not, I totally did, uh, played Morgana, a little just Sherry Renee Scott in the Ursula musical, which if you're a queer out there, you know is just Morgana. You know exactly what we're talking about. Exactly. And if you don't, well, the show wasn't meant for you. And uh, <laughs> I don't, sorry, I'm not, the views of me are mine alone, not of the Tomcat. I'm not trying to alienate your viewership. And, um, and so Tom, rightfully so, along with this um, other individual who is our who is in our lives for a little bit, and I cautiously say is no longer in either one of our lives, oh, for the better. That's why we look so young. Um, what is she gonna watch? Um, no. Like was was like the other, and I got in trouble. I got my wrist slapped, and that started a tumultuous. Uh, sisterhood friendship and like you it know, did you know, it really did oh we would go on to do um we were on the the tim burton one together yep. for a very we long did. time we did. Um, there was a short-lived batman one because we thought that would take off my god alex's memory is far better than mine because alex is much younger than i am and that's the first well, and only time i, I didn't ever need to be age. old they knew. <laughs> I'm not wearing a stitch of makeup for this show. <laughs> but no, after after the years of doing that, um, and aim, and you know, becoming friends with Alex's mother and Alex's sister, I, the two of us just sort of fell into each other's lives as organically as a plant growing. And yeah. uh, you know, it's been it's been marvelous ever since. We and you know. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I was please, say, uh, you're for, the guest. Well, I was gonna, you know, it's it's weird. I don't have, um, I I have, I, I mean, okay, that's me. I'm not trying to. It's not a pity party. You know, you have you have a lot of friends, but really, a lot of those friends can fall into the vein of like good acquaintance. Like, they're not mm. a lot of people. There's just not a lot of people that um, hold a special place. Uh, yeah, special place. Like that number, that number is small. And then inside that small number, there are the ones that have been with you for a very long time. And aside from my, like my best girlfriend, Chandler, who I went to school with since like the seventh grade and mm. have been close with, you are, you're the one. I mean, you have, my God, uh, the things that we've gone through together and to not be in the same state. That's the, uh, that's yeah, the other that's, thing. Is that's that, like this, I, we have- when when Alex and I met, uh, Alex lived in misery, and I lived in. And now I live, and and now I just live in depression. <laughs> but you all call it. Me. You all call it Pennsylvania. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but me and Alex have known each other for such a long time. We've been through. We've. We've done drag around the same time. We started um, doing doing more theater around the same time. Like our lives sort of sort of woven within one another, and yeah. uh, the, the friendship has always been very very solid. If you ever have the opportunity to have a friend that you can go months, some not not years, but a, a great long while without having a conversation with them. And then as soon as you call them, it's like, how the hell have you been? What's going on? And you pick up where you left off. Exactly. And that's and that's the thing is that and that's how you know it's real. I mean, that's why I've never I don't think either one of I, I certainly haven't. And if you have, I mean, that's that's not something that like is a, is a you that's that's all you know what I bring to the table. But I've never mm -hmm. questioned how important uh, you are to me. And how much I have mattered to you. It has always been um it's always been very obvious and and yes. how much we love each other. And, we, and we've, that always, we've always held each other very close to one another in an emotional and uh reciprocal way. Yeah, and, absolutely. And and you know, friendships <laughs> to to quote me, friendship like ours is very rare. <laughs> it, but it really is though. It really is because it's it's our friendship is so easy, but it mm -hmm. it's still that. So the work that we get to do in it is pleasurable. And I, I mean, like, but and um, there's no Kai Kai. There's none of that. No. Um, but like, but it's never been, it's never been stressful to be your friend. No. And I have never felt at any moment unloved, uncared for. All of that to say is I'm, I, I have known this beautiful human being for a very long time. And he sits here and, and just does nothing but blow the proverbial Renfair smoke up my ass, but, <laughs> but 
Y'all are very lucky that you get to see this beautiful individual flourish and grow. Cause it's a, sh it's sheer delight. You pop up on my FYP on TikTok. Do you know you that? Yeah. <laughs> I, before, before I started following you, you popped up on my FYP, which just means I'm a faggot, but you popped up on my <laughs> FYP. And I think, I don't remember, I mean, like, I don't know if it's you as B. Arthur or you opposite designing women or, you know, you as, I, lately, lately you've started doing this trend where you're just in the darkness providing words. You're just speaking dialogue. You know, it's the I love that. thing. I love it's that. So, it's so fucking weird when it comes to TikTok because I am, I'm, I'm always of the mind that TikTok is one of those mysterious beings that you just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. Yes. So I've done I've done the drag, I've done the I've done the cosplay, I've done the anthropo not, uh, the, the disembodied voices from the beyond, whatever the case would be. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, you know something, whatever whatever works, really. No, I I completely I you I mean, and, and let's I mean if I was ever going to be friends with someone who deserves all of the acclaim and praise that they get. It is, it is most certainly you. No, because you, you work. You're one of the hardest working individuals out there because you're, you're doing your art in every, every conceivable way. And um, I mean, you are, to my knowledge, and maybe my knowledge limited, you're a staple in the, in the, the con community. Um, you're correct in assuming that. <laughs> You are definitely correct in assuming that there are a lot. Well, then of I take walking. it back. You're just a con in the con community. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you bitch. Um, but no, no. I mean, I sit here and gush. I sit here and gush. Why are we? We're just uh, now. I'm interviewing you on your own show. Hey, Tell them all about you. Uh, I've never heard of you before. I come in and I just so, take over. So you cultivated a a following around your characters that you've performed as in the Pennsylvania Ren Fair. And we have surprisingly yes. enough a few friends in common because we of do. the Ren community. Yeah, the I am kind of I was actually kind of shocked, honestly, mm -hmm. um, about the the overlap. But I because I my experience in the fair community is so it's so insular because I I'm only at one fair. Yeah. So um but it's a very because, big fair. It, it is a it is a very big fair. It's it's. I mean, they'll hate me for saying it. It's kind of like the they. I I call it the Disney World of Ren Fairs. And someone said we're not the Disney Ren, we are not the Disney World of Ren Fairs. We're like the Holy Land of Ren Fairs. <laughs> and I was like, what? Why did you pick? Why did you pick Holy Land? And they were like, because every day for they three times a day they killed Jesus. And I was like, what? I don't. <laughs> okay. I get, sure. By that is like there's an arc to the fair of Holy Land. Like they know where they're going when the gates open. So I guess at our fair, we're not killing Jesus. We're just we're a bunch of Americans uh, praising the British monarchy. But uh, but I'm I'm there in PA all the time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but a lot of independents and a lot of the the people who go to the fair are very big in the con community. Yes, they uh, are. So I'm sure I'm sure actually I probably overlap in our circles on um i play D, &D on nat 21 sometimes i think uh, the, the, this it's hysterical because some way or another we would have found each other in some capacity we would have we absolutely would have it would have yeah that to me speaks volumes to to our to our friendship and to think that we met online mm -hmm. like you know the thing you're not supposed to do don't talk to strangers. Don't honestly. talk to strangers. And then what my mother's talking to the stranger. I mean, my mother was going through her divorce. My mother was talking to the stranger. That's, yes, yes, she was. <laughs> like my mother, would, my, my mother would my mother would call me and be like, I call I talk I, I talked to Tom last night. I was having a rough day and he really <laughs> have you called him? Have you called him? It's like, Ma, we've never met. We've never <laughs> I mean, I can't, I will, I absolutely will, but. No, she is, your mother is a salt of the earth woman. And I, I am so very grateful for her, for you and for um, her, for her friendship. Yeah, no, she adores you. She absolutely adores you. And the, the feeling is most assuredly mutual. I <laughs> Teresa, you haven't spoken to me in years and you got married. You got remarried and I became insignificant. Well. Room for one hairy man in her life. <laughs> so, 
enough about us because we yes. can talk about each other for literal eons. We we really will. How did you? So let's talk about your drag yep. first because um you cultivated a character called Elizabeth Hardon. I did, uh, which was cleverly uh, cleverly a rename of Elizabeth Arden because you, yes. were, you were very very taken by the the musical War Paint with um, yeah. With Christine Ebersol and uh, Patty Lapone. Yeah, and I'm yeah, and I'm not Jewish, so I picked Christine Ebersol's character. Yeah, no, I could never not have done. <laughs> what would I? What could I have? Well, the way I painted my nose, you'd never know. Um, oh <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I'm dead. Helena Rubinstein. I don't know. I couldn't have done it. Um, yeah. So I mean, my drag, my drag predates War Paint. Uh, the name, I mean, I feel, I don't know, because I, I don't know how you feel. You've always kind of been your brand, though. You have been Tomcat for years. Years. Because because your brand worked. Um, because yours was an actual brand. I think you had an identity. I think I went through, like a lot of young queens, I went through an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. um, God, I'm glad I went through it when I did and not when Drag Race was super popular. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, yeah, well, I went through an identity crisis because, you know, I found I was, you know, I'm not a I was not a pride queen. I was a Halloween queen. Yeah. So I did drag for Halloween first and I did it as. Would you say I, yeah, that's honestly how most m not not all, but so, m most, most. I feel like the. Queens, yeah. I feel like the pride. About Halloween. Yeah, because I feel like the Pride girls who get started on Pride got started on Pride with the help of another queen. Like, it's never, like, right. an experiment for them. It is a, like, that they sure were beat. For them. <laughs> exactly. Someone, well, someone beat their face and said, you're going on, you know? And mm -hmm. so I, I did drag for the first, like, real time. Oh, that's, was, when did, it must have either been, like, it was, like, his eighth grade because I saw, it was my eighth grade year. Because I saw, was he, no, or maybe it was freshman year of high school. It right around that, it would have had to have been freshman year of high school because I went between between middle and high schools when I went to New York for the first time and saw The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid, and you were, I, on an old computer, because you sent me the clip of you lip syncing too. I'm sure <laughs> I, I did. I want the good times back. <laughs> Listen, and honestly, if you find that computer, if you find that picture, you have to die. Because <laughs> um, I know that it is a like it's a platinum blonde shake and go synthetic from Spirit. Probably not even Spirit. Probably like Kmart because that was what was closest to the house. Oh, probably um, Kmart. That wig the, was that wig was something else. Just and that. my but you were you were feeling the fantasy. Oh, you, I made you're, you're I made the gloves them. with like the stand up scales. The dress was the dress was the most beautiful part because my mom helped me sew it and we painted on all of the individual like scales with like a green puff paint. And I wore a blue Under Armour shirt. Mm -hmm. That's yes, the closest I could did. get to Sherry. <laughs> and uh, I did my makeup. Um, and then I, the, my favorite part was the was me trying to figure out the pool noodle situation. And I I tried to figure out a way to like fasten them to the outside. So I have these pool noodles. But I run like do you remember, do you ever play lawn darts? They were they became illegal after a while because they yeah. were so heavy and aggressive. But lawn darts. Um, this is so Midwest. Lawn darts, the, the, um, the, um, like the, the point system is you have to get them mm -hmm. into these like big hoops and yes. the hoops can be taken apart for storage. So they can be like a straight, they're like a straight thin tube that you pull around and you can connect and it fit around my waist. So I strung all the pool noodles on this like plastic hoop and I fixated that around my waist, which is a very drag thing to do. I think like finding the way to get around this issue. However, I didn't paint or cover the tube, so it was a bright orange belt. I vaguely remember the process by which and, you cultivated that outfit. And not a single uncultured asshole in my neighborhood knew what I was. <laughs> I was too Broadway for Gladstone, Missouri. You and I went door to door, and they were like, "They're like, what are you, a spider?" And I'm like, "I'm the queen. I'm the sea witch, queen of the sea." Bah! And I, <laughs> I 
Um, but, but and then yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, then that I, was. That's why I say we both pretty much started doing drag around the same time because it was, what was it? I think 2008 that I did. Um, uh, that my mother made me my Ursula outfit. That was all. Uh, that was black velvet and the purple felt. Uh -huh. That was choices. Choices were made. Well, the good news is, is unlike me, you got better. Oh, shut the fuck up, Alex. Oh, it's true. It's true, though. I mean, but you know, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and read myself. You are just much more. You are much more talented in that vein than I am. Um, I, I I will say this: you have talent in just how much personality you have. Oh, that's yeah, going to get me yeah. eliminated on the third episode of Drag Race. Correct. That's exactly mm -hmm. when you would get eliminated. I would probably uh -huh. make it just to about the Snatch Game. You'd know. No, 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 no. You'd get the All-Stars edit. I would get the All-Stars edit. You'd get the All-Stars edit. Probably they'd, own is somewhere they Yeah, they'd take you all the way to like sugar cane level, and then they'd cut you. Yep. And, and then, 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 and then the they'd, be, they'd be like, oh, All-Stars, maybe. P possibly. It depends oh, on how verbal I become at the end of the episodes. Oh, sugar cane's not verbal. Now nah, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> oh, You'd get out on like a Bob God. Maggie sewing challenge. It'd be really weird. But I'll expect you to win. And I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I no, and you wouldn't. And you wouldn't. And you wouldn't. But no, um, that's it, it really is wonderful to just see this sort of manifestation that you have that you have created for yourself. Whether you. it's as Elizabeth Arden, whether it's as uh, you know, I'm so terrible. You've told me the names of your characters so many times and I just cannot get my brain around them. I was looking oh, at my characters that that Alex Stampoli played at the fair and I never found any of them. Well, the Wikipedia page doesn't exist anymore because I was the only one keeping it up and it required a $3 a month donation that I couldn't even foot the bill on. Uh, <laughs> you know, because like I'm still at that vein of famous where I pay for my own IMDb page. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which means every so often it just disappears. Because um, yeah. I'm like, I don't have the $150 this <laughs> Nobody has one hundred and fifty dollars um, anymore. <laughs> no, no, thanks, Democrats. Uh, just kidding, I am one. Um, uh, God, I've done well. The funny thing is, is I've been here. I'm going on my fifth summer, and I've played the same character three times. Are they bringing Panicky. you back for the? Are they bringing you back for for this year as the same character, or is it somebody different? It is. It is someone different. Um, okay. I'm actually, yeah, someone different. So my first two years, I originated a role, um, basically the gay, like panicky party planner trope. Um, his name was Sir Walter. And they brought me back for a second year to play the same character. And then my third year, I was, I got to finally be a villain. And, and was, that costume was absolutely stunning. I, oh, I love that costume. I love that costume. I'm... And then you lost a whole fuck ton of weight. I did. I did. Well, you know what, though? Not nearly as much because I put it on. Um, in muscle. In, yeah, in muscle. I put it back on in muscle. Well, and I put the costume back on about uh, right around the time Fair was supposed to be starting back up again. So I guess it would have been August, this past, you know, past August. And um, I wore it to like a one off event. Mm -hmm. in um like like at like a tourism center to like kind of push the season uh and it's still it's still fit um so i will i will steal that costume like i've already openly said like if like if i'm getting close to turning in my resignation what will happen is i will drive to the costume shop take that costume and i will leave the state of pa and i'll never come back um, <laughs> and i'll never return <laughs> i'll never return i'll never return i'll be you know i'll show up to do like a one woman show and i'll be like patty lapone and i'll be like from this particular show i took the costume <laughs> i stole shoes i even steal scenery <laughs> <laughs> um and then this last year during the pandemic, because we were we were open, we had the privilege of being open. We were an outdoor venue and we followed just, I mean, like anyone watching, like we're in March, it's past, so you're not we're gonna close us down. Uh, we followed CDC guidelines and did that whole rigmarole. And they wanted a character that made people feel good. And they wanted something that was like the heart of the, of the Shire and to give them a little bit of that joy. So they asked for Walter to come back. And that was a treat. Cause I didn't, after I, um, after doing him for two years, I was like, this is this character's journey. He's it's past. Uh, so to get to do him again and to kind of be a vehicle of, of, of hope was, was lovely. 
and I did it. And uh, he is officially he like retired. He is retired. He's retired now because there's just really not much more I can do, you know. And I don't. This place is so interesting. Yeah, I think I've point with any character when you just have to say that characters had their time, and it's over. Yeah, and I, I always call this place. Um, it feels a little uh, like like American Horror Story, and I mean that in like a super lovely way. Not like it's a terror to work here, but mm -hmm. it's such a high retention rate of the same actors who come back and do something different. Yeah, and I kind of felt, you know, it, I, I I mean, I love her the most. I think like I, I oh, am I the Jessica Lang of the Ren Fair? And I'm like, no, I'm probably the Sarah Paulson because when push comes to shove, I'm in the corner going. <laughs> um. Because <laughs> it's been a 13 hour day and my feet hurt. And I'm like, um, who hasn't been there? Oh, God, I tell you what. And with, with our size feet. Um, so it, uh, but it, it just was like one of those, like getting to step back into it um, mm -hmm. was nice. It was like, you know, when like, when all this, like, and you know, not spoiler alert, but when Jessica Lang came back as like Constance and you're like, oh, that's her character. It served what it needed to serve, but it's not something I think she nor the show would be like, we would like you to do that repeatedly. The yeah. joy is being something new. It's like the joy is you see the actor you remember, but it's there someone new in this world. Um, and so I'm very actually excited because I am coming back this summer, but I'm doing the whole thing in drag. I feel like you told me that. We've talked, I mean, we've talked about it. I mean, but it could have just never, been... You were very cagey about it because you didn't know what they were going to do. I didn't. Well, and so I, two years ago, wrote a show called Taming of the Shrews, colon, Shakespeare's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. And um, it was about this female impersonator who was looking for Shakespeare's next drag superstar. And it's a tongue-in-cheek, like... You know, it pokes historically at, at things, it f pokes fun at historical things, and obviously, like, it's a big, you know, rip, don't sue, uh, world of wonder, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. DLDR, don't sue us. We yeah, don't copyright. sue us. I, I make no money, and I've changed all of the names. Um, but I did it, but I couldn't be in it when I made the show because of my commitments. Uh, elsewhere when I was the villain, like I didn't have time. Yeah. So it happened and it happened without me. I directed it and I wrote it. Um, and this wonderful actor, his name is Jesse Cordes. I um, love him to pieces. He was, he played the drag queen, the lady best intentions. And, um, and the show was great. And it was set to come back last year in the summer. And uh, we had a lot of plans, but of course, you know, like so many, uh, you have to just wait. You know, you have to wait. And we're at a better place now where it's coming back for a second season. And I am coming back to the Shire as Shakespeare's fe premier female illusionist. So I get to finally be like the world's first drag queen. That's marvelous. I'm, I'm very excited. I mean, the That's RuPaul of a, of a Shire. Marvelous. And you've, you've worked so tirelessly to achieve that goal. Thank you've you. always it's... wanted to be the first drag queen ever. I have. I have. I wanted to take away everything you all have worked for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a sepia tone photograph of me in that dress and then bury it in a time capsule and then dig it up and say, look who that is. What's the date on that photo? 1585. Who, me? <laughs> what does it say? It says, I beat Tomcat. I did. Well, I mean, no, oh God, in order to beat you, I'd have to have a Louisville slugger. I tell you what, I, you. Well, you, I mean, you are also very tall. I am very you tall. We're both very, very, we're, we're very, both we're very both tall. We're, you, ours, we're skyscrapers. You know who you would love? My dear friend, Joshua. My oh. dear friend, Joshua Duarte. He goes by Thron Duarte Cosplay on, uh, Thron Duarte Official on Instagram. Absolutely fabulous entertainer. The three of us would literally be the Golden Girls because we're all tall. We're all, you know, big personalities with big voices. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you and Josh would probably have to fight over who would be the Blanche. You know, I here's the thing. I... I don't think I'm as much of a Blanche as I sometimes... Like, it's... I would probably fill a rose position if like someone with a more authority. I think so. Okay. 
Especially like I'm I'm just very shocked because I've never I've never heard such things before. Well, you know, know yourself and grow and um True. you know. And I you know, I I mean, who I've done my fair share of of hoeing. Um but I think like something also I don't I don't know if you experience this and maybe other queens out there do. Go um on. a part of your personality does slightly change when the look is on. Yes. Like something takes hold. Mm -hmm. Like a, a like a part of like that's always there. It's not full. Like for me, it's never been full. Um, like oh, it's another character because I know there are some, and I respect that completely. Yeah. Um, there are some people who it is a full character. Um, and I think I tried that for a little bit, and it always felt really disingenuous because mm -hmm. I was never uh, a drag for me. It has never been like another entity, Elizabeth or whatever the name happened to be at the time was just always a different facet. Yeah. But I think like a little bit of that, I say those Rose-isms, a little bit more, not like a, a simple, but Alex is a little like, and Alex is a Blanche. But I think Elizabeth has like a little bit of that like, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dizziness, we'll say. Yeah, you know, a, a little, you know, it would come out later in the episode that I had 56 boyfriends, you know. <laughs> she is not a slut. She is she the, is the slut. slut. She I'm is the grand poopa of slutdom. If you want to see more she of those. She is the easiest woman in this room. But and you, you want to laugh? That was sort of how our friendship was cultivated. We created this friendship just by quoting the Golden Girls. It started with quoting the Golden Girls, and then it was quoting Disney, then just absolutely fabulous. And we would just be on the phone for hours on end, just quoting random fucking episodes. Still to this day, I like to we will day, have we it, do the same thing. still to this day. We'll call each other and we'll have maybe like a three minute catch up. And then one of us will start and we'll get like a whole, maybe not a whole episode because we can't necessarily go in chronological order the whole time, yeah, but we'll at least get a full episode's worth of quotes out there. We'll be like 30 minutes and not a single word in like, has been spoken that hasn't been a reference to something. It's true. We live our life in references and quotes. We do, we do. Well, you know, but and like, but I think like in a way, everybody, everybody does. We everybody just does. have, we we just have the, um, we have. I don't know. I, is it the want or is it the um, the comfortability to kind of just let it be in our personality? Because like, I don't have, I don't it's have a taste. shame. It's the taste. Yeah. Well. I th yeah. I think it is. It's the taste, it's and also taste. like. You meet so many people, so many people who have a lot of secret loves who don't talk about it a lot. Like, you know, it, and like one one that comes to mind is that like, uh, well, oh hell, Ren Fair communities, even people who go to fairs a lot when they're outside of their fair comfort or maybe even cons, they don't want to talk about it. Sometimes in certain circles of people, you know what I mean? Yes. Because like um, I, I mean I'll speak for like fair. You know, I, 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 point to point of fact, yes. Yeah. Um, it, it sort of is the same thing when you discuss it, when you discuss drag, when you discuss conventions, when you discuss renders. You don't. The only people that you will talk to about drag conventions, renders are people who go to and we'll engage to with people that are involved in the same fields. Yes. And um, I agree. I 100% agree. I do not talk about conventions to pretty much anybody outside of my normal group of people that I go to cons with. And, and you know, it's, and, and like, because I, re I remember, un I mean, unjustifiably, you know, your vision, the, the, the way you see the world changes. Um, I remember when I got my job at the fair. And I like hung up the phone after getting the phone call. And I was super excited because I was fresh out of college. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be an actor. And then I went, mm -hmm. oh shit, I'm going to go work at a run fair. And like, I remember being a patron at my home fair. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to think that I'm, oh no, this is terrible. What have I done? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what have I done? What have I done? And like, the thing that I did is I joined a fantastic community who like, has exposed me to so many like wonderful things and has given me such a huge appreciation. Like now I do like tabletop RP games. I'm like a gamer. I have a more of appreciation for like, 
you know, like I say, com nerd I literally culture. have a fear. nerd culture, but in like a really positive way. Cause, yeah. because I've been able to engage in conversation. And like we found out it connects our two communities. That it does. It, you know, there's a bridge between the two of us. And I, I chose cons and I chose fair in that example. I didn't choose drag because I, we are, we are exposed to the world now. We we're there like, and I'm not like talking in like a Harvey Milk, we've always been there kind of way. I mean like Friday at eight, seven central, you can find me on VH1 uh, and then you can find me. And if you're only watching, if you're not watching but Untucked, you're only wasting true. one hour of your life. Uh, the sad reality <laughs> is that with most, with most drag queens, unless you're on RuPaul's Drag Race, you're useless. And, and that idea is so toxic. See, and that's why I'm really thankful um, like, okay, I'm gonna be, I mean, I'll be very, I'll talk about my, myself real quick. You know, as well as I, I make a joke about it. I have never done the same makeup twice. Mm -hmm. I've never done the same makeup twice. Now I will say my makeup has gotten a lot better when I made a cognitive decision to stop looking at other people's pictures. Yes. That's what I, cause I mean, I started doing drag. I started, I started venturing into the waters of drag when I was in, you know, late eighth grade, early ninth grade. And so I mean, that was my schooling years match up with the year I was in them. So that's like 2008, 2009. Um, drag race was still like, brand it was like, it was like brand new. It was like Shangela brand first new. time. It was like Shangela first time around wearing corn, <clears throat> you know, it had a bit, I could identify with that. I was like, she tried, here's my corn, you know, Ooh. Um, <laughs> but like, but like now, and as someone who's like, I've taken my time with like drag because I'm not in it the full time. You know, you I don't know if you get the question. Do people in your circle look at you because they know Drag Race? And they're like, when are you going to be on Drag Race? When are you do Drag Race? Every and I'm like, time. and I'm like, first of all, honey, I've got maybe like three outfits in the closet here. Like it's the same four gowns. It's and it's the same hair at this point. Like what's the you shit? You can't get on Drag Race <laughs> if you constantly look like a Disney villain. It doesn't work like that. I, well, yeah, that's, and that's the, th like, and like, you know, and like, I, I don't do, and like, I have such a respect for like the Rue girls and the girls that audition for that because it is their, it is their life. It is. Yeah. And I don't mean that in like an obsessive way. That's their money. Like that's mm -hmm. their everything. I, I, I lived in New York where we were both New York girls by extension. We've seen the Queens out there hustling and bustling and work. We've been around yeah. Gilda yeah. Wabbit, Sutton Lee Seymour, Cacophony. I mean, even through this right now, I mean, Gilda Sutton, Cacophony, like the three that I, Aria Derchi is another one we, we have in common. They're, they're doing a live stream like every night. They're not resting, you know, Aria. Yeah, they're they, not. Aria, and, uh, Sissy, Boudoir. Yeah, they're uh, not. I mean, just all of these queens, even the even the queens on Long Island, they're they're trying yeah, to they're work as well. Working. And my and like the KC girls that I don't I, I, I get to know from like afar because I wasn't in the scene when I lived That's in Kansas gone. City. But I, you know, I go back and I look and like, you know, Crystal Methods family is huge and in Springfield where I went to college. There, that is their livelihood. And mm -hmm. they give it such a reverence and such an appreciation that that's not where I'm at with my drag. I love my drag character and I love doing it. But like boy Alex, boy Alex works much more than drag. Than Elizabeth does. Than Elizabeth does. Elizabeth doesn't work. She's kept by a, she's kept by a wealthy man who happens to be <laughs> me. Um, I've always wanted to be a trophy wife. Didn't realize I was going to be my own trophy wife. Um. So like I get all, but like the thing is too is I don't know if I want to do Drag Race. I'm Not so far right. away. I'm so far away from that. I'm so far the away from that opinion is, being valid. But I wouldn't want to do. And it. I'm sure others. You and I, and I'm sure others have seen the fandom for what it is, and because we've seen the fandom, we know instinctively that we would either get a villain edit. We would be edited poorly. The fandom would hate us. We probably end up getting death threats for Lord knows what. Well, and it's just this, it's this toxic environment of you do drag, but you're not on drag race. Why? Well, and I also, there? I also think that um, drag race has, has evolved and in such as life. But like, if you go back, and like I'm recently re I'm introducing someone to Drag Race for the first time. We get off on this weird tangent where drag queens are talking about drag. We'll leave it behind in a minute. Um, 
I promise. We've alienated my mother. Um, uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> you go back and you want, I'm, I'm reintroducing some, I'm not reintroducing someone to Drag Race. And I always introduce someone to season six when I want to get them. And it's Bianca Del Rio, Adore Delano. I introduce them to, with that season because I think for me, that was, that's, that's like lightning in a bottle season. I think it's got the best of everything. But it was still, there's like a, there's a shift that starts to happen in like seven, eight, nine, where Ooh. what you need, what you need to have coming into Drag Race is so much more. Like seasons one through six, when it was still a little bit more America's Next Top Model Project Runway and heavier on the Project Runway where they made in the room. And yeah. like, I watched like, like the, the 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 opening episode is a is a is a sewing challenge and yes, so. all of those girls with the exception of like bianca and ben de la creme walked down in things that i saw myself feasibly being able to make in the time given you know i may understand a, a, how to sew a little bit better now you know than i may have done when i first watched it as a, as yeah. a child but you know i like that was a level i saw myself at the girls that are on there now they blow my mind. They blow my mind. It's the the resource, and I know a lot of them like funnel, you know, and I don't know their situation. That's projecting. It if they if they've been doing it for forever, they have an arsenal. Like Tina Burner has an arsenal behind her because she is seasoned and ready to go. Yeah. Or, you know, or they are a young Spitfire who said, This is what I want to do. And they aligned their, you know, their world, their financial decisions were they were centered in drag. they put a lot of money the outfits that they wore honestly. into the outfits that they wore and um and like their makeup is just you know it's 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 like it's it's if they don't need face tune because they've tuned the face yep you know and they can knock it out in a 45 minute i'm sitting here and i just look like a modest i i mean i look like my mother yeah <laughs> And my mother's a very my mother's a very beautiful woman, but I, I think look, we can say without fear of repercussions that we both look a lot like our our respective mothers. We look like our mothers, and we said, you know what, that's good. It's fine. It's good. Yeah. I'm okay yeah. with it. I'm serving you fish now. Granted, it's frozen tilapia picked up at Walmart at ten ninety eight, but I am serving you fish. <laughs> Got one of those red meat coupons you peel off, and you get a discount when you leave. But I don't have the strength. I don't, this, this took it out of me. Uh, I couldn't imagine. One, and before we, before we started, Alex and I were talking about, um, and I, the schmuck that I am, did not notice because every time I've seen Alex in drag, Alex has a beard. Whether that beard mm -hmm. is painted to match the wig, painted to match the eyebrows, I've always seen Alex in drag with a beard. This was yep. the first time, one of the first times I have ever seen Alex out of a beard and in makeup, and it took me until Alex had said, "This is the first time in a while that I don't have a beard on." And I'm like, "Wait, you don't? What?" And, and that's because I still don't know how to shadow correctly, and it looks like I have a beard. <laughs> I was so nervous, Tom. You have no idea. I, I mean, I, I was. I told you before I before I came mm -hmm. over tonight. I was playing D and D for a little bit, and we started yeah. at. They started at seven, uh, so I had to be ready to go by seven. But like, I started. Uh, La Belle Belle said, I will never do drag race. No interest. Good girl. Uh, and listen, honey, there's no judgment here. There's no. absolutely no judgment here. Uh, actually, if I do drag race, I'm doing drag race UK just because it seems like it's a lot of fun. Um, it just seems so much more put together. It, yeah, but in a way that I feel like I could like walk in and be like, fine. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I mean, I, I'm not getting super far, but like, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm all like, I could, I could hang with bag of chips. Um, <laughs> I, I eat enough of them. I could hang with her. Um, but no, we, I started getting ready fi at five o'clock because I have not painted my face without my beard in mm -hmm. so long. I didn't remember how to shadow it. I did not remember how to shadow it because I mean, I've not had uh, I've not had any of this. And so uh -huh. I didn't know where any of that went. I was like, oh. well, uh. <laughs> <laughs> And then as soon as Alex came on the screen, I'm like, you are Lauren Lane, Cece Babcock from The Nanny. And I My mental so health is a sick game to you, isn't it? Black him up, let's play again. <laughs> 
So like, although the, also the first time in years I've been able to like make my lips bigger than yeah. they are because I haven't had a mustache. Uh huh. Not so big that I couldn't. And this beauty mark's real, by the way, kids. I know the kids today will I say it's fake. That you need to milk that beauty mark for all it is worth, my friend. <laughs> Also, I just, I keep touching, I keep reaching up and inadvertently fixing this side of my hair, but the you want to be cameras, the other side of you want to be hair. fixing this side, uh, this wig, bobby pins, that's right, uh, sponsor me, send me another one. Um, <laughs> I actually want, you know, segue, I wanted to hit up bobby pins for a Winifred Sanderson wig. Bitch, when he did them for Halloween and oh, was like yeah. auction them off, I was like, these are so stunning. Well, and see his, so he's got my attention. He's yes. had my attention because I love the hair. Um, and like, it's a, it's affordable. I, you know, and I don't do much <laughs> uh, when it comes to my hair. Um, I don't do anything. Um, and you know what? There can be success in that because my drag aunt, uh, suddenly Seymour has like, I'm convinced 78 of the exact same wig. Uh, in a different and color. You, and, well, no, it's that white one. Uh, it's just that <laughs> one white one. Uh, there's a couple of other real, but it's just that one white wig pulling it's it out. Like a, it's just, wig. it's like a cartoon character with shirts. It's the same one every, <laughs> uh, every day. Um, but it's a brand and it works. So I think if like yes. you lean into it and we always see you in it. And so like, you know, I told you um, this is like, you know, I, it came out. It's like I think the blondie. It came out of the bag. I ran a comb through, it and I said, "Well, you kind of look like I styled it." Um, but, uh, but his stage ready wigs that he's been doing every Friday, the auction, like not even In the auction, like just how. Sanity. I mean, th I've been really sanity. close. I've been real close, and he always says, "Like if you want me to do a recreation of one that I've done," and there's a couple that have been like his, like Bridgerton his Bridgerton ones, or like when he did Patti Lapone for Hollywood, I was like, <sighs> but I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a redhead. Like this is my color, dark root, ashy blonde. I mean, kind of like changing it up. You, I don't know. You were able to successfully dress up as uh, Meryl Streep switching into the woods. Oh, you mean, her. I mean her exactly. Mm. Who is she? Who is she? Who is her? she? She is old. <laughs> <laughs> She's very old. That was like putting on a museum piece for that show. Because I had this built um, when I was a in couple college. Of ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this was actually this time around. The corset in the back met. I didn't need the modesty panel. Like it met, and the mm. person who sent me in, she was like, she was like, you're not really getting cinched. And I was like, they won't know that. It's a bunch of hetero people in a barn. They have no idea. Um, so I had this built my senior year of college. I think like altogether, I spent like 500, 500 on that dress. Uh, I wore it one time, did a gig, and I never wore it again. Like it sat. You you have just discussed and discovered what I go through on the regular. I maybe get two wears out of one costume. I like La Belle Belle is coming in here with some hard truths. First of all, it told me that I look amazing. That might have been for you. I'm gonna take the compliment. But then came in and humbled me real quick and went, um, just ask Bobby to do a dark root blonde in the Hollywood style. And like, Mama, I know, but it's a $375 venture. And then I got to ask a question. Too much nerve. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the anxiety is real. Well, you know, you put it in your cart and you just sit there for like an hour going, is this what I want to do with my is life? Is this, is this it? Is this it? Should I buy it? So, um, but I, I sat on this mannequin for like the rest of that year. It went to my mother's. It's been in storage. And then finally doing this show and mm -hmm. we were doing this drag show kind of like still in the wave of the pandemic as my holiday show here in Pennsylvania. I was like, hmm, I don't feel, I didn't want to buy a new outfit. Mm -hmm. That's really what happened here. If you want to know the truth of why I made the decision I made, I didn't want to buy a new dress because I can't go and try anything on right now. Like you can't go to a dressing room. Uh, I have the, I have the, um, the privilege and that's going to sound really weird, but when I say I have the privilege of still being able to pull something off the rack, uh, even when I like, even if it when makes I like, you feel any better 
Um, the outfits that I've been wearing more frequently, like this beaded outfit, this is a 2X. If I even thought of wearing this with my breasts, it would there would be beads and sequins all over the place because it just would my my boobs are so huge. So I, I have to do the whole like cinch it in and like yeah. do the whole B Arthur illusion that where she had the flat chest. I just and, I just like yeah, the it, the word privilege like uh oh and LaBelle just offered to do my hair. Send me a couple of the wigs you're wearing and I'll do them. Oof, honey, you're gonna I have like two. No, 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 no. You're gonna LaBelle, get I, I trust LaBelle with wigs. I trust it, but then I'm gonna be Sasha Valor for a while while they're in the shop getting worked on because I only have <laughs> I only have the two. I only have the two. And then they're going to be at work done. I'll be a bald girl. I have to shake the rose petals out. Um, Why not? But no, so she I did, did it. So, but the, well, I pick a different flower. Bird of paradise. Something really awkward. Um, <laughs> ah, Hydrangea uh, petals everywhere. Oh, please. Um, but so no, I just, I didn't want to buy a new dress. And I said, well, none of one has seen this yet. And it's been, a, it's been five years. So I brought her back to PA and I slipped her on. And it, if it wasn't like wearing a museum piece, like I felt me move and I'm like, oh, that stitch just said not today. Like I was in it. And like, by the end of it, I said, okay, you go back on the mannequin. You feel you've had a good run. My question to you is where were the problem areas? Oh, I, minuscule at best. I need to have, so I created a couple of my own because the dress needs to, the, the skirt itself. Cause it's actually, it's just a two piece outfit. Yeah. Um. So there the skirt i need to just have the skirt taken in which is mm -hmm. easy peasy because once the skirt's 10 and it's at the right waist um everything would be much better i know more than i did then i need to put in some snaps on the skirt that have corresponding snaps um uh in the corset so that it becomes one piece when it's on yeah because of just there's nothing really like aside from like luck and a prayer there's nothing holding the dress it will slide down. Oh, you could so I would do a hook and eye. Yeah, and that's and that's something I, I know I can do. The main issue with this right now is it wasn't really meant, and I'm not a dancing by any stretch of the imagination. I will never You're, bill myself. You, you and I have had multiple conversations about this. You are a pointer sister. I am a pointer. I'm a pointer sister. I'm a park and barker. I'm you know I do a lot more stand up when I'm in drag than I do anything else. And the show build, I, I build the show that way. And so it's not meant for what little movement I did do in it. Um, but especially, especially the, oh, I'm using the wrong hand, especially these, <laughs> these like the big arm pieces. Cause in Merrill's, it comes up the arm and then makes the hoop. The way my designer did this then off of a couple of photos, cause the movie had just come out when I had this made. They really didn't know how to fashion that. So it's like two wire coat hangers are making that loop. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just in like a very thin uh, casing of like the black shear with maybe a little like cross grain to reinforce. But the metal, even though it's like it's wrapped in um, like gaff tape, it just it rubs up against the yeah, shear and it's starting to it's it's starting to, you know, to get through. Yeah. Um, and so it just was, it was one of those, like I could feel it like poking and prodding. And when I took it off, I could see what was going on. Yeah. And and also like, it's not, I would want to take those off. I think if I did anything to it now, I'd take them off and really look at the image of it coming yeah. up the arm and do something maybe more flexible and forgiving out of like, out of a cross grain that could bear some weight, you know, well, to you give it the, that you loop. Do horse hair. You know, yeah, and it's just it's when you know things like, and that's the other thing too. The whole it's always knowledge, like, yeah, that's I don't. I mean, like, and that's like the whole thing about drag, though. I mean, that's really about the whole thing about anything you and I do. I mean, really, yeah. you. I mean, your arsenal of characters and costumes. I mean, I mean, Lordy, and not this is not to like read. Like, you've done it, or uh, uh, you constantly improve. Like your evil queen, you've improved upon your Ursula, you've improved upon. You know, you take it, you go back, like, okay, I did it this way, let's undo it and do it again. Yep. And um, and that for me, that's fun about it. That's the fun thing about it. Like this, you know, like my, my face tonight is like the best that I have ever looked. And if I look like hell to you right now, this is as good as it gets. Imagine what people have paid for in the past. <laughs> and um, we are not improving upon perfection tonight, friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you know, but like I, 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 I experiment, you know, I, I'll like, if I'm bored one day, I'll put on a new face. Like, I'll play. just try. Yeah. yeah you play. Why you you have to. Well, why would you wait until, why would you wait until you have to go on? It's true. I say that as someone who waits till they have to go on and they still try I, something. We, new. We, we've both been there. We, we, and then I, and then I call you vehemently upset and I'm like, Oh no, it's not. I'm, I'm minutes away from having to go on stage told. and I have, I have to wipe my eye your, off. Your frustrations friend. Just, Tom, yes, Alex, I don't like how my face looks tonight. Why do you not like the way your face looks tonight? Well, my eyes, my nose. <laughs> well, it's these. These have always... It's the, yeah, it's the eyebrows. Well, I'm Middle Eastern. If you insist. <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, no, I, it's the boy brows are so hard to put down because you use you're using your real brow. I always use my real brows. But you've got prettier eyes. Like you have you have eyes for that that I don't. I, you know, a lot of it, 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 I, no, I am, um, privileged. Ble I'm blessed and cursed. And when well, I say I'm blessed and cursed, I mean I love my eyebrows, but. I also have a very hard time gluing them down. Um, I was looking at old pictures of myself as Winifred Sanderson, and I could tell that, like, the blue, the blue on my eyebrow was like trying to come through so so hard. And I'm like, how many more things of, how many more layers of Elmer's glue do I have to put on this? I do not want, I do not trust Prose. I may, may try the. Um, the cream. I, I had mentioned I had mentioned last episode with Lyra with two episodes ago with Lyra Vega um, that I used the cream. I did not use the cream. I used the liquid. I'm, I'm fixing myself there. The liquid was just <sighs> with Prose. I, I was worried I was going to have to shave my eyebrows that day. Yeah, and I I got dangerously close to sh to threatening to shave off my yeah. eyebrows, it, and especially when I think about the summer coming up doing drag the whole time. Yeah. Um, but I I invest, I mean, she sits right here on the window ledge. Sorry, we're not sponsored. Well <laughs> you all know, the, the purple one. The purple, what we all know, I, the purple I one. I can't explain why, what the magical properties it is. Um, but like, it's, it's like seven layers at this point. It's, it's like lot, seven layers. It's a lot of layers. It's seven and layers. And my stumble, though, I will tell you that I've learned. Mm -hmm. My stumble with it has always been what I do after the glue. Because mm -hmm. I've learned, like, I go once against the grain, and then I go with it, and I try to go up. Because it's so, my hair is so thick that if I just went straight across, it would be like a, a ridge. Yes. So I try to go up. But what I was messing, what would happen afterward is I would focus on so much foundation to try to cover it. I have a suggestion. Have you ever used a spoon? Like in my life? <laughs> <laughs> what? One of the things. I'm a rebel. Learned, my Cheerios are on a fork. I this Raven when she was when she was a couple of shades lighter. I learned it from Raven, and what she does is she took a spoon <laughs> and she flattened her eyebrow with the back end of a spoon. I don't use a spoon because... Um, you use a spatula? Yep. I use a spatula. This looks really gross because it's got my foundation on it because what I did after I do that is I take like a big chunk of my foundation off and I like hit it in the points and then I take my sponge and just try to dilute it and then yeah. I do powder. But to tonight, I just said, you know, we're gonna go back through and then we're gonna do the powder. And then um, my face is brought to you by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And then I just, I white out the, the bottom. But I only really ever do like one eye. Like I, I try colors and stuff. And every time I do a colored eye, I'm like, mm, I don't like it. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I do. But uh, you have you, know. you have very um uh, you have gorgeous eyes. You can use practically any color and your eyes will be fine. I have Thank to use you. like 
a purple or a pink or or even a blue uh, just to, like bring out more of that rich amber that i have in my eyes apparently and um well at least a part of you is rich it's, it's true it's very true all the, you think these are real they are it's my hands that are costume jewelry <laughs> wouldn't that be the gag is at the end of this you reveal you're a brat doll and like you just go like <laughs> kunk, kunk. <laughs> and also like the solid choice to keep your like giant forearms what they are but it's like the daintiness of your hands that you're like yep. not today <laughs> just speaking of be careful if you fist someone D correct a fist a day does keep your proctologist away, but if that wrist falls off... I've lost many a good appendage. Speaking of that... <laughs> you tried uh, to segue, uh, and I, I... We are at the hour, but damn it, I just love talking to you so much. We can go for as long as you fucking want to. Well, we can go for a little bit longer. That's we'll fine. Bit I have longer. no problem with that. How are you feeling about the Cruella movie? Your profile picture on Facebook is of you doing the the future look on on her face that Emma Stone wears in, in the movie. But I am, did not I'm get not your opinions. Did not get nearly as many likes on Instagram as I was hoping, which is a shame because someone I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to get to the movie in a minute, which is just a shame because someone liked that photograph who found my face found my Instagram and I was like oh and they were like a cosplayer and I went mm -hmm. to their Instagram and their most recent photograph was the future look and they got infinitely more likes than I did I think solely based on the fact that they had the wig yeah so but were they I a think, bear or were they an otter no, I tried. I see. So, okay. Now you've caught me. Now you've brought it to everyone's attention. What I lack in talent, I'm trying to make up with a nipple. <laughs> I'm trying. So to, I'm going to get rid of the so audience. Proud. We'll never be successful. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we're thirsty and take <laughs> thought photos. Why do I look like Glenn Close right now? I you was going like to Glenn. say you are feeling the just a teensy weensy heckle. Heckle. More good women have lost their career than to war, famine, <laughs> disease, and disaster. <laughs> you have talent, <clears throat> darling. Don't, Don't squander, squander it. it. Watch me on Netflix and Hillbilly Elegy. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'll come back now. <laughs> but no, I'm tr I'm not talented. <clears throat> I'm not pretty. <laughs> And I'm not a I'm not a cosplayer, but I have started going to the gym for abs. And if those don't bring the likes, I'll never end up on Ellen's TV show. <laughs> <laughs> you are a fucking disaster. I didn't start working out for my own health and sanity. I started doing it because I was never going to get a career. Ugh. I'm not an influencer. I'm trying to be gay. I'm trying to be a thirsty gay. But you know, I don't know. The next is like only fans while doing impressions. I think that's what it's gonna be. Like, you know, just like I, I got on a diatribe. You, you truly me. would then become the next Waylon Flowers and Madam, wouldn't you? Unfortunately, I haven't I can't fist my own self. I would be my well, own Waylon and Madam. Um <laughs> I can't be my own Wayland and Madam. So sorry. <laughs> So sorry. But um, no, I, I'm i actually, so I'm excited about the Cruella movie. There's a lot of opinions. First of all, I find the funny thing right now on Facebook, especially Facebook, because it's not, yeah. my Twitter feed is so overtaken right now with like, if it's not politics, it's like some guy showing whole. Um, and often enough, they're both Republican senators. Um, but uh, <laughs> looking at you, ladybug, and if you know who that is, you're in the know. Uh, but um, no, so everyone's like gotten on Facebook and there was like those people who were like, I don't understand why Disney's trying to do a female empowerment story about that woman who skins puppies. And I'm like, okay, just because the phrase I am woman, hear me roar is in there. I don't think Disney's packaging Cruella as a, yeah, female empowerment. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's the, the case. Whole, the rest of the, the line leading up to that was I was born different, a little uh, bad and a little mad. Like they're hinting at it. Like, 
and yeah, it looks like kind of like, you know, Disney's answer to the Harley Quinn franchise or to mm-hmm. like the Joker movies. You know, Jared Leto could never be Cruella DeVille, but I'm convinced Emma Stone could be the Joker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would pay I would pay good money to see Emma Stone as the Joker. But I think I figured the movie out and it, it makes my heart happy. It is clearly, it is a clear prequel to the 1997 live action 101 Dalmatians. I agree with that sentiment. It is Cruella DeVille going through the 80s. She is toppling, I mean, these are contact clues. She is clearly toppling the other, like the origin of Cruella, which is this, which is Emma Thompson's character. Yes. Like, it's going to be the two of them duking it out. It's how does she meet Jasper and Horace? Um, You know, it's, that's what we're getting. And she's going to take over and she'll be House of DeVille by the time the movie ends. And we'll get there. You know, are we going to see... It? Here's the thing. Are we going to see actual skinned puppies in the movie? No, I don't Well, and they say it like in... They say it like in either... In any iteration of 101 Dalmatians that Cruella was the one out skinning dogs. And I'm not trying to excuse it, but like you and I are, I think, are the authority on the subject. I have watched every iteration of Cruella um, you know, down to once upon a time's like one off. Even her it's, role in the book, even her. It was role about in, the fur. It wasn't about the fur. It was about the fashion and about being an eccentric. And that's, I mean, like that's, and that's, and even when it, even when it does finally, I mean, even in the book when she kidnaps the dogs to get the fashion to get the fur, she kidnaps them. Like, yes, she is integral in, like, the assignment of kill them, Mm -hmm. but Cruella's not doing it. And I'm not trying to sympathize. They're not going to make you want to sympathize with the... the I don't think they're going to make Cruella a sympathetic character the same way they did for Maleficent. No, Um, no, they're not. And that's the other thing, too. Is that the other thing? Thank you. That's the other thing I wanted to say, is that people get all upset about, oh, Disney's trying to to sympathize the woman who killed dogs. Okay, and how do y'all feel about Maleficent, who literally said, this bitch gonna die because I wasn't invited? Like... Mm. And did it, it was, there was no one sitting there going, well, I I mean, I, I mean, okay. So do we care about the dogs more than we care about the baby? And I don't want to get into that debate. That's, oh, that is, there is not enough deodorant for that conversation, my love. But I just think that, um, I think it's going to be a great film. I will yeah. tell you, I will tell you, I am already going into it a little disappointed. Why? I do not, I have not liked a single one of the black and white Wigs. Outfit? No, wigs. Oh, uh, they're perms. I don't like that. They're perms. No, I... Actually, I take that back. The one that I like the most is the one where she has bangs. Where she's in the fashion studio. This is, I'm just getting started, darling. I'm just getting started, darling. That's yeah. my favorite hair because, and maybe it's lighting, a couple of the black and white wigs in the light that they look in, they don't look black and white necessarily. They look more like a black and like a light cream. It's not a hundred percent white. Um, I just thought there was so much thought. If you go in, like if you fall into the, the, the internet, there was so much thought put into Glenn Close's wig. There was so much thought put there into was, it. There was so much thought put into that character. Yeah. Uh, whether yeah. it was the heels that she was wearing, the fur exactly. that she was wearing, the cigarette color, the cigarette exactly. holder. Uh, there yeah. was just so much that went into what that character became. Yeah, um, and so I'm I'm disappointed. I guess that you and you hit another one. I'm disappointed, and so far in the wigs. Also, I want to know what's a wig, because I've always viewed Cruella having the hair that yeah. it's not a piece. And I'm not sure now, is she a ginger who is putting on a front? Or is she having this hair putting on a front as a ginger? Because it it changes too much. You know, I mean, like, a woman with those kind of bangs couldn't do the perm in that Catching Fire outfit. No, that is very true. And so so that's got me a little steamy. I mean, it would certainly turn a lot of of fan theories on their ear. Um, I, I, you and I both, you know how I have my opinions about Once Upon a Time, but 
we can both agree that Victoria Smurfett stole the entire show as Cruella DeVille. Oh, inspired. And then that brings me to the other thing that I'm already disappointed on. Cruella DeVille will not be a smoker. Well, we don't know that yet. I Doesn't Disney have something in there that they don't do smoking in any of their shows anymore? I know that's why Once Upon a Time had to do the magic route. I had to do the, the magic breath instead of an actual cigarette. I'm... I don't know. I know they did it years ago. This was, I think it was something that you and I both shared hilariously. And it was an article saying uh, Cruella DeVille will no longer be smoking in the 101 Dalmatians movie. They're going to edit it so that the smoking is removed or replaced by something. And I'm like, well, that's just, I mean, okay. Yeah. I love the fact, love the fact that she is drinking ink. Was she? Tiny little glass that she has, like in her gloved hand, walking down. Walking down, it's it's black ink. Is it? I love mm -hmm. that. I wasn't sure. I don't know. I mean, like that. That really salts me. That I. That makes me excited because it is an ode to the original novel of why she gets kicked out of school. Also, it's it's fun because Once Upon a Time did that so smartly as well. Completely. I'm also very interested to see what she's go like, what her appetite is going to be because in the Dodie Smith novel, she eats only salt and pepper. Only salt and pepper. Uh, no, I'm sorry, just only things with pepper. But she I never just like anything else. So it, I, it's just, it just I'm, it's such an interesting character, and I'm fascinated to see what they do. And it's coming out on. I just read this today. It's doing the premiere thing on Disney Plus. It's going to cost me thirty dollars, but you know what? So would the movie theater. So I'm doing that's it. If you got, that's if you decided to get all the bells and whistles, the popcorn, the candy. Well, I mean, a movie ticket's eighteen dollars nowadays, and of course, I want food. So. Mm. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to watch it when it comes out on May because I need joy. Um, <laughs> I'm going to rent. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to watch it all the time. It was designed for the gays and the drag queens. And you it was. It was. And, and then Pride Month will be there before you know it. I mean, in Pride Month this year is going to be a lot of Cruella de Vils and a lot of... It's going to be Cruella de Vils and WandaVision. Cruella de Vils, a lot of Scarlet Witches, a lot of Agathas, a lot of... That's um, I, I think... Here's the thing. Drag queens will be Agatha Harkness. The Twinks will be will be Scarlet Witch, and Have then like you, the educated of, the educated have, Twinks will come out as her son Wiccan, and they'll try I, to jump oh. the gun. Can we can we discuss that? I, I was so touched um, by how they made Wiccan and Prodigy those the not Prodigy um Speed, Speed. Wiccan and Speed were in their appropriate costumes. I love that. I loved that so much. It was great. I we're mean, I we're this fucking we're, close. We're right there. They just have to. They just have to disappear, and then they have to come back thanks to Mephisto. Yep. See, so, I'm educated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never once did I say that you weren't. And oh, but how many? That, I'm sure you can prove that, though. I'm sure I can. Uh, just like you have a hideous tape of me in early in early geesh, I probably have a voicemail of you being like, "You fool." Um, <laughs> I, had, I had many of your voicemails saved actually when you would impersonate um, Regina. I love you. <laughs> As a matter, have of you seen the one that I oh. love the most? Was um, it's true. I have done unspeakable things and yeah. i just just that one i think i saved that one and I just I should be full <laughs> I was uh, yeah. it's the killed yeah like i've um i've done unspeakable things um killed countless individuals i should be full of regret but the thing is i'm not <laughs> just <And> then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everything I've done got me my son. Ah, I love her. And that, oh, that, so the TikTok, the, have you seen the TikTok of like, it's that man screaming, being like, this bitch walked so Peppa. <laughs> and it's the, the, this bitch walked cut is Regina casting the dark curse. And then it's so that this bitch could fucking run. And then it goes to Scarlet Witch doing the hex. And I'm like, yeah, you had to become also what? The Miss Honey and Sarah Paulson one. That one, That's... that one tickled my funny bone. <laughs> well, at least something is. Lordy, Jesus. <laughs> Thanks. There's nothing I can do. Get that look I, out of your I eye. 
Wait, what, uh, what did you say? I said, there's nothing I can do. Get that look out of your eye. <laughs> but um, I you do so to get that look out of your eye and let go of my hand. So yeah, no, I'm I'm here for Cruella. I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, I I think that all summer we'll be seeing Fagatha Harkness's everywhere and the Scarlet Witches and a lot of Watch young people. My brooch. You you have yours. I mean, I have mine. I'm sure I'm ready. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. It's I'm already making a mix to Agatha all along. I'm oh, also reworking God. the song. Thank God. Thank yeah. goodness. Who's been bottoming everyone? It's been Fagatha all along. <laughs> Who's been snorting all the poppers here? It's been Fagatha all you. along. <laughs> well, I, I wrote in the housewife stick. And then like on the house section, it's like you didn't think you were the only magical girl in town, did you? And then doing this shit, only the witch who casts the runes can use her magic. <laughs> and that look, that fact that when she went to go kill, check out, choke out those kids, she said, real quick, I'm going to do my makeup. Have you seen that meme? No, I haven't. There's one where it's like, more, I, there was somebody who posted like this bitch was just, one second she was one second she was having the having the girl tribe the next she her, she beat her face and she was choking the kids. Yeah, they called her like uh, Agastasia Beverly Harkness Hills. <laughs> the internet knows no bounds. No, it doesn't. We're too powerful. But knows no bounds. Way too powerful. Oh. But it is time. We have. It is we time. We've gone over nonsense, but. I I love you. I worship you. I love you. you. You are such a wonderful, magnificent human being, and I am just eternally grateful for you and your friendship. Um, Me too. Well, and before we do that, I'm gonna before you ask where the people can find me, I'm gonna try yeah. something here. For years, before I go, for years, this one and I have been on the phone periodically, being like, we should do this, we should do that, and then we never did anything, and now the pandemic has been here. And now we're That's finally cool. doing it a year later. This episode is called Two Bags of Drag. It's called Bag of Drag. I was very Bag specific. Bag of Drag. Oh, just the one? Just the one. Well, you're one, I'm the other. Exactly. And so here it is. Four <laughs> years we've been talking about doing a show together called Two Bag of Drag. Two Bags of Drag? Two Bags of Drag. Two Bags of Drag. If you leave leave a comment in the comments, I'm looking at you, LaBelle Bell, because you're the only one commenting, girl. Um, <laughs> leave a comment in the comments. LaBelle Bell, you are, you are right now a Nielsen box in someone's home. If you leave a comment, this will get renewed. This will be the impetus we need to start a semi-regular fit into our busy schedule rendezvous where we get back together and do our own shtick. A spin-off, if you will. A spinoff you know. of Cat Trap, the same way that Maud spun off of All in the Family, the same way that one show almost spun off of The Nanny. The empty Nest. Empty Nests off the Golden Girls. <laughs> yes. So if you'd like to see the B. Arthur of drag <laughs> and the 1950s the... housewife of the 1980s. Oh, there it is. There it is. The two people watching. My mother came out of nowhere. She said, I'm here. <laughs> Teresa, <laughs> Teresa renewed it, and LaBelle Bell. Oh, Amber, Bo where the hell have you all been? You know what? I don't have time. I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> Sit here in the darkness, not saying a damn thing. All right. All those wonderful people out there in the dark. I'm ready for my close up, Mr. <laughs> all right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close up. <laughs> Fucking disaster. <laughs> oh, that's who it is. I'm Glenn Close and Stepford Wives. You're Glenn Close. Oh, duh. Stupid. Teresa says that she has been listening. I what are we a podcast? I didn't get this painted for you to listen. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Tomcat uh chat. Um, there's a traffic update. These two drag queens painted their faces, but everyone has walked away from their computers and they've been everyone gingerly listening to us in the back. Oh, now I smeared. I got that season one filter on. Oh, the Vaseline filter. We stand the Vaseline filter. But to answer your question before I disappear, where can the kids find me on the social medias? Um, you can find me on Twitter um, at A Stompoli, or I think it's actually at Alex Stompoli. It's my boy name. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Um, Alex Stompoli, there's my per personal page and my professional page. Give both a follow. 
Um, I not to be like that person. I'm getting precariously close to too many friends on Facebook. Um, friends on Facebook. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know them. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm on Instagram at a stomp Um, and from there you can find a link for Elizabeth. Um, but I really honestly, like the two of them have become so synonymous with each other that I don't kind of bill her separately anymore. Um, you know what I mean? I just like, it's, yeah. it's, it's one of the same. I love, I love being her whenever I can. And it's exhausting to, to be me, let alone be both of me. So also like, Boy, do I know that feeling? And Elizabeth will take a really cute photograph and I'll be like, oh, I want that on the boy page. And I'll be like, Oh, okay. Well, that's cute. I'm feeling it. So. I mean, you know, in terms of, not, not to prolong the conversation, but in terms of drag, like Alex Stompoli can be whatever Alex Stompoli wants Alex Stompoli to be. I, you Alex know what? Elizabeth Gray. That's, that's the thing is I actually just had this conversation um, with a friend of mine. Uh, I actually, a company, uh, two friends of mine own a company called Actors Helping Actors. They're based out of Chicago. Free plug because they're wonderful. They do consultations for all kinds. Actors uh, Helping and Actors. Wasn't that a thing that was on Living Single once? I've been living single for 27 years, so I assume so, yes. Yeah. Um, but they, they did a consultation with me and we're revamping my website. Uh, I need yeah. to pay them to start it, but I need to. And like, I just had a long talk about it and I'm going to take like boy photos and I'm going to do like stubble boy photos and I'm going to do like makeup boy photo. And then I'm going to also go and do a session in, in drag and throw it all on the website because it is all the same. You know, I mean, it's the markability that, of it all. That was honestly one of the things that I was doing too. It, when, when my website gets built, there will be all of these things. There will be like the voiceover stuff. There will be the cosplay. There will be the drag. There will just be. And now, it. and now with the upcoming fair gig and doing it for, you know, for 11 weekends and yeah. you know 30 some odd performances, this individual will exist. So. Makes perfect sense to me. So, friends, there you have it. There's there's a new show coming your way. God knows when. And I got a stream yard. Me, I got a stream yard too, and I have the one where we can put our own logo. Delicious. So mote it be. If you want to follow me, you can at that Tomcat on all forms of social media: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Vero, TikTok, all over the place. I'm actually going to probably, because I charged my phone this time, I'm going to actually work on doing some more tickets. But Alex, love of my life, air that I breathe, I worship you. We uh, just, there are not enough good things I can say about you. I love you, darling. I love you so much. Thank you for giving me time to just to talk with you in this place and for us to just have this time together. Um... <laughs> Just no, I, let us sing a song. <laughs> I I love you so much. You are uh, forever an inspiration um, and a light, and um, you're just you're incredible. And I'll be um, free around eleven o'clock. I'll give you a call. Perfect. I All look right. forward to it. Bye, guys. Chow me up for now, and I'll see Bye. you soon. Bye, kittens.